still continuing to build up the church there in D.C. And, uh, you know, that church, I know you all know this, but what God's doing there and, and you all is a uh, such a message of hope throughout our nation, what God is doing there. So, all right, Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. And I'll give you just a minute to everybody to find that, and then I'm going to turn there myself. All right, so verse 18, uh, the prophet writes and says, Then I lift up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. Then I said unto the angels, or the angel that talk with me, What be these? The angel answered, These are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. And I said, What came these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these, speaking of the carpenters, are come to fray them, to fray the horns, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lift up their horn over the land of Judah, to scatter it. So I want to... Uh, talk to us this morning about God's four carpenters. Um, in Zechariah chapter 1, as we're reading, the prophet is being given a vision. And uh, in this vision, he sees that there are four horns. Or, as you study that out a little bit further, the Amplified Bible says it this way. Those four horns, it, it, the Amplified Bible says it's four powers. Sorry about that. Four powers that have risen up. so we don't have that ding going on. So these powers, these four powers, or these, these four horns of these four powers had risen up against Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem for the purpose of scattering them. Now, Judah, Israel, Jerusalem, we know are a representation of God's people, right? The righteous seed of Abraham, right? The seed of Abraham that was made righteous through the covenant that Abraham had made with God. All right, now, Obviously, I understand that the book of Zechariah, that prophetic work was for Israel, but I believe it also applies to us today because the, the powers of hell, whether it was back then in the Old Testament, prophetically for Jerusalem and Israel, for Judah, it's also true for us today that the power of hell is continuously at work for the same purpose, and that is to scatter the righteous. If we look at Acts chapter 13, verses 7 through 10, uh, Paul and Barnabas in that portion of Scripture there in the book of Acts are traveling as missionaries, and they come to the Isle of Pathos where Sergius Paulus, the governor, the Bible says the governor there desired to hear the word of God. And so he invites Paul and Barnabas to come and to share with him the word, but there's a sorcerer by the name of Bar-Jesus, or the Bible says Elimus, as it was translated in the Greek. And this sorcerer interrupts, and he interferes because he desired to keep the governor from hearing and coming to faith. So Paul looks at the sorcerer and says, O oh, full of subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? So whether it's in Zechariah or the New Testament, the nature of the adversary is, is simply this. He is the enemy of righteousness. Right? So in, in the book of Acts, he sees that this sorcerer, sees that uh, Sergius Paulus is getting ready to receive the word, and he's going to come to faith. And so he begins to try to scatter and cause confusion and division. And, and whether it's in Zechariah, the book of Acts, or 2021, the nature of the enemy is that he is the enemy of righteousness. Right? He is continually at work to scatter the righteous. Right? He, he desires to scatter righteous thoughts. I, I don't know about you all, but bombardment of thoughts, just kneel down to pray. And all of a sudden, every task, all the tasks I couldn't remember all day long, all of a sudden I remember every one of them. All right? if, if you want your, your, you know, your mind to be bombarded by things to do, Open your Bible and say, you know what, I'm going to spend some time studying the Word, and every thought will come, right? Because that's the nature of the enemy. He, he is there to, he desires to scatter the righteous. 
He desires to scatter righteous works. Right? He, he desires to scatter righteous marriages. I, I'm convinced that marriages in the church fight more devils than, than just the average marriage. There's more coming against us. Right? And, and, you know, I know we try to come to church and pretend, no, everything's perfect in our marriage, but you can, you can turn your camera off right now and make the faces at each other because they're not. None of our marriages are perfect because all of hell is coming because the enemy is desiring to, to, to scatter whatever is righteous. He desires to scatter righteous families. Right? He, he certainly desires to scatter righteous churches. Now, I don't want to. I don't want to present this mindset that the enemy is like some invincible foe, you know, that we should be terrified or dismayed of. But I, I do believe that many overlook and underestimate the power of the enemy. So Zechariah has this vision of four horns or four powers that have, and I think the key word there is have scattered Israel, Judah, and Jerusalem. So not trying to, not wanting to, not planning on it. But he said they. These four horns already have scattered. So, I mean, if, if you don't believe that there's power in the enemy to scatter, just look around us right now. Right? I mean, how how much more divided can our world get? I don't I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how much more divided we can get. Right? Our nation is divided. Right? And you name it. How many different ways? You know, politically, racially, financially. I mean, you name it. There's division. Right? And and even in the church, there's division. We see the enemy at least trying to make his way into the church to divide us. Right In the last year, there was a study that was done by the Barna Group that reported that in the last 10 months, one in three Christians that 10 months ago were attending church are no longer attending. Not, they're not attending online or in person. They're just not attending. All right, What is that? That's, that's the power of the enemy scattering the church. Scattering the saints. I recently had an evangelist a couple months ago who preached here at our church. And afterwards he told me, he said, most of the churches that I preach in, the pastors tell me that on a good Sunday, they're back to 60% of their people. On a good Sunday. That, that's including people watching online. All right, that's, that's apostolic churches. Why is that? Because the enemy is coming to scatter. And that's, that's his job. In, in fact, I want us to look at the purpose why the, those four horns come, so, or why those powers come to scatter. Look at verse 21 there of Zechariah chapter 1. It says these powers, these horns came to scatter. And then it, here's why it says, so that no man can lift up his head. That's really because the enemy knows if he can get people divided, and people separated from the church, it's not too long before they're not going to be, they have no hope. They have no strength. They have no encouragement. Right? And, and that was the purpose of the scattering, to bring Judah to a place that they could not lift up their heads. Right? A climate where people lifting up your head is, I mean, as long as your head is down, all you can see is your situation. All you can see is where you're standing right now. As long as your head is down, all that you can see is, you know, three feet surrounding you. When you lift up your head, you can see there's a future. You can see beyond your situation. You can see that there's other people around you that have needs as well. And, and so the, the purpose of the enemy is to try to get us to keep our heads down so all we can see is our own present condition, right, and, and discouragement. Anybody feeling any discouragement these days? All right, I, I didn't... Hopefully you're fighting it, but I think we're all feeling it in some way, discouraged in some way. Uh, and, and I believe that this may be the prevailing spirit at work in our world today and in the church today, it's scattering our faith and our vision, right? We're unable to really believe that God is truly at work, right? Unable to see that God has a plan that he is working through whatever it is that I'm going to, I'm going through. And... and so Judah, which is the tribe of praise, he said the, 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 the horns of, in, of the enemy, the powers of the enemy have come to scatter so that Judah, the tribe of praise, cannot lift up their heads. And I think in this season, we've got to be intentional about our praise. All right? And, and
And praise is more than an emotion. If the enemy has convinced you that praise is just an emotion, he's he's already done. He's already won the battle. We've got to believe. We've got to understand. There's power in our praise. It's not just emotionalism. It's not just hype. All right? it, when when you break through in praise, there's encouragement that comes. Your head is lifted up. Oh, lift up your heads, oh your gates. Right? Lift up your heads, you everlasting doors. And then the King of Glory shall come in. And I think we as churches and individuals have to be intentional in this season to praise. Right? Because praise lifts your head off of your problem and sets it on his power. And so these four horns of the enemy have come. They've scattered Judah. They've scattered Israel. They've scattered Jerusalem. And they've scattered Judah so that no man can lift up his head. So, obviously I painted a pretty dark picture. All right? The whole world's going to hell in a handbasket is basically what the first 15 minutes of our lesson has been about. But there is a solution. Zechariah, this portion of scripture that we read does not end with the focus being on the four horns, on the power of the enemy to scatter. Because the Lord gives him a vision, and in the vision there is a solution that is provided. Right In the midst of this vision, as these four powers that came to divide, overpower, and scatter are being revealed. It doesn't end there. Right? And and I know right now it's easy for us to, in many different situations, all we can see the scattering spirits that are at work. But but just like it wasn't over for Zachariah, it's not over for us. God is at work and there is a solution. Alright? And the solution that God shows Zachariah is the remedy for these four horns, these four powers of the enemy. God says, I've got a, I've got a, for every power of the enemy, I've got, a, I've got a solution. There were four horns and there were four carpenters. Listen, God's never overwhelmed by the enemy. God's never outnumbered by the enemy. For every problem the enemy brings, God has a solution. All right, for every dilemma that, that the enemy brings, God has an answer. There were four horns. And God said, well, my solution for the four horns is four carpenters. Now, I have to be honest that when I read this passage of Scripture, and I see, man, there's these four horns, these four powers of the devil, and, you know, then I kind of, in my mind anyway, I see the imagery of kind of Bob the Builder, right? God says, okay, my solution for these powers of hell is I've got four, four carpenters. And in my mind, I see, you know, four guys with hammers and screwdrivers, and I'm thinking, hey, you know, God, we're up against we're up against a powerful adversary here. Why not four Navy SEALs, right? Why why not four Apache helicopters? You know, why why not four stealth bombers? Why why is it got to be four Bob the Builders? Why why is this? I mean, come on, give us give us a little more than that. But 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 the Lord said the solution for a scattering adversary is a building church. Right? It's a building church. That's always been the answer, and it always will be the answer. So if you put four soldiers, if, if, if God would have said, all right, you know, Zechariah, you've got four horns of the enemy, four powers that have come to scatter, that have come to bring down the heads of Judah. And he says the solution is four soldiers. Well, soldiers fight, but that's all they ever are. They're four soldiers. But, but the word that is used in Zechariah speaks of one that works with iron. It's a smith who builds weaponry. And when you put four carpenters or four smiths opposing those spirits, now you have the capability not just for four soldiers, but now you have weaponry for four battalions of soldiers, four armies of soldiers. So a building church is the solution for hell's intrusion. It's not just God saying, I need four powerful people of God. That's not it. It's I need four building people. I need people that are going to that are going to raise up others around them. I need people that are going to uh, you know I need people that are going to build their faith. I need people that are going to grow things that are bigger than just them. This isn't about me and you defeating the enemy and of ourselves. It's about us building up a church that the enemy cannot defeat. Right? It was Jesus who said upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The answer for hell's intrusion into the church has always been a building church. It's 
not a stagnant church. It's not just that I go to church, but it's a church that is building. Right? A stagnant, dormant, and active church is not the solution for scattering spirits. And again, for each of the four spirits that came to scatter, God established a building spirit. All right? So he said, all right, you've got four scattering horns or four scattering powers. For each one of you, I've got, I've got, some, I've got a, a tool. I've got something that's going to build, that's going to oppose you. And, and verse 21 says that these building spirits came to fray. That word fray means terrorized. So you want to know what a, in our, and we don't see the church the way that the spirit world sees the church. When, when the devil sees a building church, it terrorizes hell. I, I mean, I, and I know we look at ourselves, not, not us, you know, we're, we're imperfect. You know, we're, we're, we don't even have a building right now to meet in. We're, we're borrowing somebody else's building. We're having Sunday school on, on Zoom. But we're building. We're building. Something bigger is coming. We're building one another up. We're strengthening one another. And right now, what we're doing right now terrorizes hell. So I want to just very quickly, I want to four different building or work, what I'm going to identify as workman spirits that we, we've got to commit to in the church that will terrorize those scattering spirits, that will lift up our heads, all right, and, and terrorize those same devils that have come to, to uh, separate our families and scatter our, our faith, scatter our churches, scatter our communities, scatter our nation. All right, I believe that there is a remedy, and it is a, a building spirit. So here's... I just want to present four things that I find in the scripture that we can build that will oppose these scattering spirits. First of all, building altars. All right, we, we, we have to build altars. The Old Testament patriarchs were men that built altars unto the Lord. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, every one of them have one thing in common. They built altars unto the Lord. Noah built altars unto the Lord. Elijah built altars unto the Lord. And altars are a type of sacrifice, right? Consecration and worship, right? Romans 12 and 1, Paul wrote to the church and said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And I, I, we need to understand in this hour, when you build an altar, you drive away a spirit that has come to scatter. Dads, I think in this hour, we've got to build altars in our homes. We've got to build altars for our families. We have to build altars. There are spirits that are coming to destroy the family, and they're not hiding it any longer. They're, they're bold that they're coming to redefine what a family looks like, that it's not a, a husband and a wife and children anymore. It's whatever they want to define it as. That's, it's not even subtle anymore. It's in our face that they're coming to destroy the family. Well, I'm going to tell you what, what terrorizes is not some policy passed in Washington, D.C. It's some dad who builds an altar in his living room and says, not this house, not this church, not my community. All right, Abraham built altars that covered his, not just his family, but they covered his nation. We, we can build altars that have an impact and it will terrorize the enemy. All right, th those that are trying to build relationship with God without sacrifice, without worship, we're only fooling ourselves. And if we don't have altars, if we're not building altars, the enemy will scatter. All right, I'm, I'm you know, I don't, I don't know where, where everything's going, but it, it, it feels to me like there is a, uh, and it appears to me like there is a, um, a decree of war being issued against biblical mindsets. Even things being said that they're going to um, reprogram those that have a conservative mindset, a biblical worldview. They're going to reprogram that. Now, I don't know how much of that is fear-driven and how much of that is reality, but I, I think it lines up with where we've things are progressing. And, but, but the answer for that is we have to build, if we don't, if, if our children, if we don't have an altar in our homes, the program, thank you, Brother Will, if we don't have altars in our homes, you don't think they're going to try to change the minds of our children and reprogram or deprogram them? No, absolutely. But we 
we are the ones that have the ability to terrorize the enemy by building altars. So I challenge everybody in this room right now, build an altar in your home. Dads, build an altar in your home. Husbands, build an altar over your marriage. Moms, build an altar over your children. All right? Every one of us need to build an altar for our church and say, you're not going to scatter this church. You're not going to scatter this people of God. We're not going to be divided. We're not going to attack one another. All right? We're, we're going to stand together. And, and the way that we do that, the remedy for the scattering spirit is a carpenter. It's a builder. It's a building mindset. Secondly, the second thing I find in the scripture that is a building mindset is building the house of the Lord. In 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 12, God speaks and says, He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. Right? He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne. And I, I think for us in the New Testament, certainly, I'm, you know, we're in a building right now. I'm, I'm in my office. But I don't think that's what it's talking about. It's talking about building a place in our lives for God to dwell. Build, building a place, building a time in our lives where where we invite God in to, to move in our homes, to move in our families. And God said, if you will build me a house, I will establish your throne. And what is throne? A throne is a place of power. A throne is a place of authority. Whoever's sitting on the throne with the scepter in their hand, whatever they say goes. And God says, listen, I know that scattering spirits are coming right now, but, but if you will build me a house, I will establish your authority. All right? I'm, I'm going to give you power over those scattering spirits so in the old testament he dwelled in a tabernacle but in the new testament he said he inhabits the praise of his people so building the house of the lord defeats scattering powers it, it defeats those four horns so I, again I, I i i pray i believe the day will come that that the dc church you all will have a physical building but you all have something so much more powerful than a physical building Right? You, 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 you have the ability to right there in your living room say that this house is a house that we have set aside as a place for God to move and, and inhabit. And so I, I want to challenge you, build, build the house of God. Build the house of God in your home. Build the house of God in your family, and God will establish your throne. He'll give you power and authority. The third thing that I find in the Scripture, kind of that carpenter mindset, is building walls. Now, Nehemiah heard that the condition of the broken down walls that protected Jerusalem, and the Bible says he mourned, he wept, he fasted, and he prayed. All right? And then the wine tester, Nehemiah, became a wall builder. All right? And, and you know, we know in that context, Ezra had rebuilt the temple, which was you know kind of the house of God, but Nehemiah recognized, if I don't rebuild walls, the place of worship is just going to destroy it all over again. And I, I think we, we've got to build walls. We have to build walls about our, around our relationship with God. All right, one, one thing as a parent, you know, uh, my youngest daughter, Dakota, if I allow her to, she will, she'll sit on technology all day, every day. She'll be on her iPad from the time she gets out of bed until the time she goes back to bed. And, and anyway, that could obviously, uh, you know, now with, with schooling being done online, some of that's good. But I have to build walls around what I allow her to look at. Okay, because again, this some of this deprogramming that they're now coming out and saying boldly they're going to do, they've been doing. They've been doing it through things that our children are watching on, on YouTube and on different television channels. And as parents, we have to build walls. Right? Our 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 victory against scattering spirits is we have to build. We have to put boundaries around around. Our relationship with God. There, there are things I'm not going to watch. Okay, if you think the enemy hasn't been deprogramming the church for a long time into accepting the non-biblical family, all you got to do is watch your favorite television show, and they're introducing characters into there that are saying it's just an alternative lifestyle. It's okay. It's not a big deal. They've been working on that. Well, if we don't put some walls around that. All right, we, it's time, we've got to build walls and say, no, devil, we, you're not bringing that mess into my home. You're not bringing that mess into my mind. You're not bringing that into my thoughts. So I'm, we're going to build. And when we begin to build walls, that scattering power of the enemy is defeated. And lastly, I find the last 
kind of building spirit that I would mention is found in Ephesians 4 and 12. It says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. And the word edifying there, the Greek word, uh, oikodome, my dad could probably pronounce that better, but it means to build. For the building of the body of Christ. So, the building of the body of Christ is everybody in this Zoom call. You know, right now we're kind of, I don't know if you all remember the Brady Bunch, right? It was like those nine squares and they're all, that's what Zoom reminds me of. But we're, we're the body of Christ. Everybody on this call right now. And, and I'm going to tell you what terrifies hell is when the Brady Bunch in here today, when all of us begin to build up one another and we begin to pray for one another and we begin to encourage one another, we begin to strengthen one another. When we build up the body of Christ by having an unconditional love for one another, right? But by not just that, but that that passage within Ephesians four and twelve is also talking about us finding our place in the body. When we find our place in the body, what God has designed us and equipped us to do, when we're all doing what God created us to do within the body of Christ, that terrorizes those scattering spirits. And, and a building church will always defeat a scattering church. Churches right now that are just kicking it into kind of maintenance mode aren't going to make it. And we're just going to try and wait this thing out. Well, you're going to be waiting a long time, maybe even eternity. Because this isn't going away. The attack is not going away. All right? And if, we're, if we just adopt a maintenance mentality that we're just going to go through the motions and you know, kind of sit back and, and hopefully we can all hold on. We're not going to last. We're not going to make it. But if we will, on the other hand, get a mindset that says, you know what? Yep, there's some scattering spirits that have come, but but we have some we have a carpenter mindset. It's time to build. All right? Noah built in a time nobody else was building, but Noah said, I'll build. And through Noah's building, salvation came to all mankind. All right? It's time. I know it doesn't look like the optimal time to build. I know it doesn't feel like the right time to build. It feels like time to kick it into cruise control and hope we got enough gas in the tank. I'm telling you, it's, the t it's time to build. It's time to start believing that revival is coming. All right? And I'm preaching right now to myself as much as I'm preaching to anybody else on this call because I feel those scattering spirits trying to bring my head down and discourage me as well. But I've, I've got to fight against that. I've got to awaken Judah and say, come on, Judah, it's time to praise. Don't let your head be brought down. Don't, don't get focused on just your, what's around you right now. There's a bigger picture. There, there is a future for the church. There is a future for your family. There is a future for what God has. And the answer for scattering spirits is a building church. Now, I recently heard a, a message, and I'm just going to borrow a little bit from it, but in that sermon, the preacher brought out that there's only one way for somebody to become a blacksmith. To be, and, and that's in the context of Zechariah. That's what we was talking about, a, a blacksmith, somebody who worked with uh, you know, steel to, to make weaponry. But there's only one way. You don't go to blacksmith school. It doesn't exist. You, you don't go to a trade school. The only way you can become a blacksmith is you have to learn it from another smith. Right? You, you, have to be a, 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 you have to be kind of a journeyman. You've got to sit at their feet. Right? And... and the solution for the scattering forces of hell that have come to overthrow the kingdom of God are that we, we have to begin to pour into others around us. Right? We, we have to begin to, every one of us should be finding somebody that we can pour into. Right? Because God is, God is raising up. God is raising up an army, but it's, it's not going to come through our conventional discipleship programs, you know, 101, 201, which we've done and we still try to do. But, but really, what scares the devil to death? Apprentice, thank you. Uh, Brother Gibson typed that in the chat window, our sister Gibson. Apprentice. All right. When we begin to raise up others, when we begin to take somebody under our wing, when we begin to invest in somebody and pour into them, right? Kind of like Paul said to Timothy, I see the same faith that was in your mother and your grandmother. I see it also in you. That was poured down into Timothy. And, and I believe in this hour, the church is going to become powerful. The church is going to be greater than it's ever been in this hour. And that's going to come as we pour into others around us, one-on-one, -on -one, investing in somebody. All right, Giving to them the same faith that we hold on to, 
sharing that faith with them in this hour. So I just want to encourage you all today that I'm, I'm, God didn't say to Zechariah, you know, that those scattering spirits are a figment of your imagination. Don't worry, they're not really. No, he didn't say that. He said, they're powerful. They are. But I've got, I've got a solution for every power that comes against the church. I've got a greater answer. And the answer is a building church. And I just want to encourage you all, don't stop building. Build those altars. Build a house of God. All right? build, 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 up on, build, build up your faith. Build the body of Christ. All right? Build those things. And, and ter let's terrorize hell together. Let's terrorize the enemy. All right, thank you guys. I'm going to turn it back to my dad and uh, let him take it wherever he wants to do from there. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, my. That was awesome. My great word for this morning. We thank you. And every one of you, thank you for joining us today. And uh, I'm going to ask maybe uh, if, let's pray together. I, I know before we turn our mics on, we have learned some experience about the Zoom thing. But um, let's go leave Zoom and then we'll plan to see you uh, 4 30 uh, for uh, prayer at uh, CLC and then uh, our service at, at 5. Uh, we have some exciting things planned for today and uh, look forward to getting together. Let's pray together right now that the word that we've heard will we'll find you know, a place in our hearts that we will take what we've heard and the, and the carpenter spirit will take hold and terrorize hell. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I praise you, O God. I thank you for your body. I pray today that the spark of your presence uh, would touch the hearts of the people and the fire, the flame would become contagious, O God, as we pass it on to one another as we encourage one another that the flame would become a, a fire a blazing fire a, a, a wildfire that spreads across the nation and around the globe lord the presence of god yes lord let pentecost be revisited yes lord the the latter rain O oh lord that was prophesied let it be poured out and let it, Lord, let it be that the church has the structure in place to be able to incorporate people into the body. And Lord, I thank you today for the word that we've heard. Let the anointing rest upon us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The recording has stopped. unmute you can you know at least say hello to one another or you know how we do it's our it's our fellowship <laughs> hello <laughs> man that's good go ahead a little, a little unmute I say hello everybody praise the lord people y'all look good this morning <laughs> <laughs> hello everybody hello I Love you all. So good to see you. So good to see you. Hey, Arita. I see the little children there. Angela and Annie. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor. Oh, Azusa. These are little apprentices. <laughs> Although it's not going to plan right now, but we'll get there. <laughs>